The Grand Hall of the Intergalactic Council headquarters buzzed with activity. Representatives from over 200 alien planets were gathered for this quarter's meeting, one of the most anticipated in recent history. Today was the day several alien experts would present their findings on the mysterious planet Earth. For centuries, this distant world in the Milky Way galaxy had fascinated the intergalactic community. Now finally, they had managed to send reconnaissance missions to study it directly. At the front of the Great Hall stood the Council's wise ones, eleven ancient beings who presided over the meetings. Though from different worlds, the revered wise ones commanded great respect for their wisdom and impartiality. Let us begin, Zathar intoned telepathically, his body nothing but a floating robe and wisps of psychic energy. We have important matters to discuss. The hall quieted as the first presenter slithered up to the central podium, Zorplax of Glurp. Zorplax came from a warm, humid planet covered in fetid swamps and bogs. His serpentine green body oozed slime as he moved, leaving a glistening trail along the pristine white floor. Esteemed Council, Zorplax gurgled, his jowls quivering. I have ventured to planet Earth and studied one of its most abundant environments, the subtropical wetlands. With a flip of a switch, Zorplax displayed a detailed hologram showing images of his descent through Earth's atmosphere and landing in a muddy Florida Everglades region. Mosquitoes buzzed through the damp, hazy air and cypress trees with dangling Spanish moss lined the waterway. The scene looked remarkably similar to Zorplax's home. As you can see, I felt right at home among the boggy swamplands of Earth, Zorplax continued. The humidity, the pungent aromas, the crawling insects, it reminded me much of my beloved planet, Glurp. Zorplax then described his encounters with alligators, snapping turtles, water moccasins, and other wetland creatures. He belched up a live fish from his planet to further emphasize Earth's similarities. Therefore, I confidently conclude that planet Earth is a fetid, festering swamp world akin to Glurp. I found abundant muck and mosquitoes everywhere I slithered across its soggy terrain. Satisfied with his irrefutable evidence, Zorplax oozed back to his seat, leaving a fresh trail of goo across the once pristine floor. Zorplax's assessment of Earth as a fetid swamp planet rattled the Intergalactic Council, but before they could fully process this disappointing reveal, the next presenter approached the podium. It was Klaxer, a furry quadruped being from Frigidus, a planet covered in icy tundras and glacial mountain ranges. Klaxer's people were adapted to the extreme cold with their thick coats and layers of blubber. Klaxer took her place and shook loose bits of packed snow from her fur. Greetings, council members, she began. I have also explored planet Earth, specifically the frigid polar region known as Antarctica. With a tap on the console, Klaxer displayed a hologram of her descent through swirling snows onto the icy continent. Massive glaciers and drifting snow blanketed the land as far as the eye could see. The video showed Klaxer hunkering down against bitter winds, her fur coat providing only minimal protection against the piercing cold. As you can witness, the climate was dangerously freezing. I nearly lost my tail to frostbite out there, Klaxer said. She then described her trek across cracking glacial ice, dodging hidden crevasses. The landscape was devoid of greenery, populated only by a few hardy creatures like seals, penguins, and seafaring birds. In conclusion, Zorplax is clearly mistaken. Earth is no swamp planet, but rather a world of perpetual winter, much like my beloved Frigidus, Klaxer stated firmly. The planet is dominated by massive ice sheets, frozen oceans, and an unforgiving sub-zero climate. Perhaps small, swampy regions exist, but the majority of Earth is an arctic wasteland too cold for most life forms. Klaxer's account puzzled the Council even further. 
Her polar expedition painted a starkly different picture of Earth, but how could both depictions be true? Murmurs of disbelief and confusion rippled through the Great Hall. Zorplax oozed back up to the podium, incensed by Claxer's words. With all due respect, dear Claxer, perhaps your limited exploration of one minor region caused you to extrapolate too broadly, he posited. And perhaps you let your narrow experience in a swamp color your entire perspective of the planet, Claxer fired back, icicles forming on her fur with rising anger. The two experts glared at each other, neither willing to concede their position. The council watched anxiously, hoping the next presenters would finally provide definitive clarity on planet Earth's environment. Little did they know, reaching consensus on Earth's nature would prove far more complex than any imagined. The bitter argument between Zorplax and Claxer left the council utterly baffled about planet Earth. Just as tensions threatened to boil over, Zorona glided up to speak. Zorona came from the desert world of Iridia, where water was scarce and temperatures scorched by day. Her kind had evolved to thrive in dry, barren environments. Please listen, I come with a different account of Earth, Zorona rasped, her scaly skin parched from the long journey. Murmurs rippled through the hall as all eyes turned to her. I landed in a vast, sandy region humans call the Sahara. It spans much of Earth's northern continent of Africa, Zorona explained. Her hologram displayed sweeping dunes and weather-carved buttes baking under the relentless sun. Bones of long-dead creatures littered the endless wasteland. Zorona described trudging through fine sands whipped into stinging clouds by hot winds. Searing daytime heat contrasted with frigid nights. Water was virtually non-existent in this parched environment. As a creature of the deserts, I felt right at home in this dry, barren place, Zorona said. She displayed samples of desiccated plants and reptiles uniquely adapted to the harsh conditions. Make no mistake, Earth is very much a desert planet, much like my own world of Iridia. Zorona's stunning claim brought immediate objections from Zorplax and Claxer. Perhaps small sandy patches exist, but clearly Earth is primarily a land of ice and snow, Claxer asserted. You are both still misguided. Earth is largely composed of hot, steamy swamp lands, Zorplax countered. Zorona refused to back down. I explored a desert larger than many planets. How can you dismiss Earth as anything other than a desert world, she argued. A fierce three-way debate erupted as the council looked on in dismay. Each presenter was convinced their unique experiences defined Earth conclusively. But with such wildly differing accounts, what were the council to believe? Was Earth a bizarre patchwork of totally separate environments somehow coexisting? That seemed impossible. As the presenters quarreled loudly, bones from Zorona's sample suddenly knitted together and sprang to life. The reptilian skeleton lunged at Zorplax, attempting to bite him with its bony jaws. The council gasped collectively. Their information-gathering mission had taken an unfortunate turn, dissenting into conflict rather than reaching consensus. Hopefully, the remaining presenters could help reconcile these contradictory positions without further chaos ensuing. The Intergalactic Council Chamber descended into chaos as Zorona's skeletal sample attacked Zorplax. Guards rushed to restrain the snarling creature while concerned murmurs echoed through the hall. Just as quickly, the skeleton collapsed back into a lifeless pile of bones. Its strange animation ceased. Zorona sheepishly withdrew the errant sample, apologizing for the disturbance. The Council's wise ones telepathically called for order. We seem no closer to understanding planet Earth, the robe-like Zathar intoned. Let us hear the next presentation in hopes of gaining clarity. The floor trembled as the rock-like Granger approached the podium, shedding small pebbles with each heavy step. Hailing from the planet Mineralia, Granger's people were living embodiments of stone and ore. 
Wise ones, esteemed counsel, lend me your ears, Granger rumbled, his gravelly voice echoing through the hall. I come to you with the truth of planet Earth. Murmurs rippled through the crowd as Granger displayed his hologram. It revealed his descent onto a towering summit deep in Earth's Himalaya mountain range. Snow-capped peaks stretched as far as the eye could see. Here lay rock and stone in every direction, Grangor boasted, his fists cracking open geodes and crystals collected from the mountainside. Earth is clearly a planet of rich mineral composition, abundant geology, and active tectonics, much like my native Mineralia. Grangor went on to describe Earth's soaring cliffs, plunging ravines and sloping ridges. He spoke of the planet's seismically volatile crust, punctuated by belching volcanoes and crumbling fault lines. So you see, learned counsel, Earth is fundamentally a world of stone and minerals, Granger concluded. All else are merely superficial biological layers masking its true lithic nature. At this, Zorplax, Klaxer, and Zorona all objected loudly. Stone peaks amid endless ice, Klaxer cried. Sandy dunes across barren wastes, rasped Zorona. Fetid swamplands swallowing your precious hills, Zorplax accused. The wise ones called for silence before the situation devolved once more. Granger shook the hall with a concussive stomp. You all lack the proper perspective. If you would just... Suddenly, Granger froze in place his stony features going blank. The council watched tensely as cracks appeared along his surface, signaling impending upheaval. Granger stood motionless as fractures split across his rocky exterior. The intergalactic council waited anxiously, unsure what was happening to the stony being. Finally, Granger shook loose the last fragments and turned to the council. My apologies. I did not intend to alarm you. The rigors of space travel caused my outer layers to deteriorate. I molted my damaged surface to reveal fresh stone underneath. Relieved that Granger was unharmed, the Council regained composure. Just then, a melodic voice echoed through the hall. Wise ones, if I may, I believe I can help reconcile these quarreling perspectives. All eyes turned to Flora a willowy being with bark-like skin and a mane of leafy tendrils. Hailing from the vibrant jungle planet of Viridae, Flora's people communed with the botanical. By all means, please share your wisdom, Zathar said. The other presenters looked on warily. Esteemed Council, I traveled to a wondrous region on Earth called the Amazon Rainforest, Flora spoke gently. Her hologram displayed an aerial panorama of the sprawling jungle. A mosaic of greens blanketed the landscape as far as the eye could see. Here exists more plant diversity than anywhere I've encountered, Flora continued. She described tropical fauna, soaring canopy trees, entangled vines, flowering orchids, mushrooms, ferns, and more. Cascading waterfalls fed snaking rivers teeming with aquatic life. You see, Earth contains all of the landscapes described by my colleagues, from icy peaks to barren dunes. Flora gestured conciliatorily to the others. But it is the planet's breathtaking diversity that makes it truly unique. Flora went on to explain Earth's dynamic climate patterns, tectonic movements, and axial tilt that created its mosaic of biomes, all interconnected in balance. Other worlds may exhibit singular extremes, but none matched Earth's blended complexity. We must see beyond our individual perspectives, Flora implored. Only then may we grasp Earth's full grandeur. The other presenters looked thoughtful as Flora's words resonated. Perhaps in their narrow focus, they had each grasped but a facet of Earth's diversity. Flora speaks wisdom, Zathar proclaimed. Let us explore Earth anew, seeking not to impose our limited views, but to understand and nurture its splendid complexity. The council broke into applause, the presenters rushing to congratulate Flora. 
Their differences fell away as they now saw their experiences as pieces of Earth's grand mosaic. Come, we have much to learn on this marvelous planet, cried Granger. Arm in arm, the former rivals headed eagerly back toward distant Earth, newfound comrades in exploration.